Hey everyone, I'm Tacitix. Welcome to Plotting and Scheming. We are in the in-between time preparing for Season 55, 5 vs. 5 Grand Arena Championship. I am joined by Dagger, TJ, and Sasha Isha, my uh, typical weekly co-host here. We have a special guest once more. A uh, real pleasure to have him, one of the finest theory crafting minds in the game for kind of all modes of content. Welcome, Fatal. How are you? Kind of you to say. Uh, how's it going? Happy New Year. Thanks for having me on. It's a delight to have you. Have you. Uh, yeah, and sorry just to, you know, put the cigarette right out in your eyeballs, guys. How are you doing, uh, TJ and Sashi? I know I know Dagger's a few minutes away from getting in, but he'll be here. Oh, doing great, doing great. We've got news dropping the game, so it feels pretty vibrant. We'll touch on that in just a moment. It's like a here. And, and thanks for having me. Feeling like shit, because I need a really time mm-hmm. I eat pop. But how are you? <laughs> it, it, it will be asked of you. Um, so, yeah, let's go ahead and face the music. You know, guys, we I had a, a well-written-up agenda just going into this, and minutes before we were planning to start recording, they have this uh, this announcement New update on the Battle for Naboo raid. So the long and short of it is you're going to have these characters specifically get a buff. Jar Jar Binks, Master Qui-Gon, Padawan, Obi-Wan, Darth Maul, and Stapp. There are faction bonuses for Gungans, Galactic Republic, and Separatist. Um, Let's see, it's counting Sidious. Really? Huh, that's kind of interesting. And then there's this long list of allowed characters, which is kind of cool. I guess you kind of have some flexibility when you see, oh, I could make use of Jedi Consular. Um, You know, your disused Jedi and stuff like that. And then then when you realize uh, at the bottom of all this, the the new top tier of the raid requires level 9. Relic level 9. So, take it away, guys. What do you think about the, the update overall? Uh, I'm just going to call out and openly say new Fatal videos went. We're out of the speeder bike, so that means the min-maxing is going to be here and how we make the most of it. And I, I, I will say, all the way up until the end, I was I was pulling up some YouTube videos to make sure stuff went in. So, I'm not going to plug Fatal in the other way. I'll let him do his talking, but <laughs> those Fatal min-max went. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, no commitments needed, Fatal, but just a lot of pleading on our behalf. That's right. No, I, I fucking want to, man. I the it's not a cop out, but the answer is when I have access to ADHD medication, I make videos. Fair. <laughs> I, do, I do. I do not have access to ADHD oh. medication. So and many videos have died halfway done. It's, mm-hmm. it's the new setup. We're not getting his. We're not getting past his hat. We're getting. We're getting a fatal his medication, so let's let's get on that now, everybody. We need if anyone can call up let's my get... insurance company and argue that it's medically necessary, that would be awesome. I'm kind of tired I of. In... We will I summon. Work in insurance. This is good. I actually... How have you not rallied <laughs> yeah, your we'll, fan base we'll, we'll to this cause? Yes. <laughs> it is a noble cause. People have blown up corporate phone lines for far less. No, I. I want to, I, I really, really want to. I'm hoping I can get over the hump and get something out. There's plenty of topics I want to talk be talking about right now, but as always, no promises, but yeah, it's kind of on the forefront of my mind right now. I'm hungry. I'm bitching. And hopefully this will be a raid where, hey, the mechanics might actually play the way we normally play the game. We'll see. I, I kind of like... Some of the characters that we'll get to have a use of. Yeah, I actually like that there's Sidious. Didn't I, I really you know what didn't I expect just that. What's that? Queen Amadala is not a hero character, but Stap is. Yeah. Everybody, everybody else. No, Queen Amadala is listed though. She's not, but not she, as a hero character. She's not a hero. She's an allowed. She's allowed. She's allowed. She's yeah, not yeah, yeah. I see so what you're you... meaning. She, yeah, she isn't specifically getting buffed, called out here. John Marquis with TDB or with Raid Omicron is a hero. Generic named dude on vehicle. The Queen Amadala. Everyone else is a named person, and then you have nope. man. She's just a Driven. costume, Fatal. Just you just take it, alright? We we have yeah. we have other things. We have Newt. Sidious gets to play the game and he gets the stuff altered. Queen Amadala, she's just in the background. We need a remaster of the Phantom Menace where 
the the three points of view of the Battle of Naboo are the Jedi fighting and then the space battle, and then we just follow one snap around on the field as he's like doing <laughs> strays and stuff. That that's Fair. my real hero. You you, you want that mashup with that that one B one that kept getting juggled around at the Battle of Geonosis. They, they, they just make it really gritty, just like a huge total swing makes zero sense. Fantastic. I, I'll salute for him. That's my I, I, I'm reading this raid stuff just in real time. Yeah. We had, um, you know, this really just dropped as we began recording. And mm. I'll tell you, my first reaction is, and it's a skewed one, it's not totally on point. I don't mean to derail. But that R9 requirement makes me think R10. Like, it, that's when floodgates open. And this does make me think, like, if they're going... R9 is still a really restrictive hurdle. And, yeah. and I kind of feel like this is... Um, this is likely to be tied to Lisa's floodgates being, if not fully opened, well, uh, loosened. I, I, Maybe I'm going to call it. out, and, and I think it'll be a point of reference for us at the tippy top and everything else, is what does the materials look like you get for that next box? Calling out the new mm -hmm. crate, and that the pitchforks will be raised and everything else, right. because this, to me, the way I'm reading it, right, they're doing droid hordes, and that's what we're going to fight, so the randomness is uh, from the what is it? The step sergeant or whatever it's going to be? The droid? So I said, that's where I think the, the fatal min maxing is going to come into play. It's reminiscent mm -hmm. of what we'll be seeing. We're not, we're not on that speed of bike. We're not going to get people who are going to get motion sickness. It's not, you know, five minute raid. It looks like there is a way to actually min max this raid and what it's going to do regardless of the randomness. Um, so I'm, I'm interested to see how it's going to come out, but I, I want to see what the rewards are going to be. If they're giving a new yes. crate, is it really worth the effort that we're going to put in? Because I'm looking at some of the characters and I will call out, we already know that the Gungans will get their raid on me, right? But they're doing Queen of a Dollar doing that. Are they going to give one? Because I, I called out Keith Foss being a, you know, a jackass about it, but is that the one that's going to be for Queen of a Dollar, right? And it, and it gives you the, well, if you really want to get the min-max, the most min-max, because the level 7 is giving a faction bonus for Galactic Republic, is that the one where it's like, well, if you get your Relic 90s cost, it's going to have a raid on me that's going to really put the team over the edge. Just mm -hmm. like the Gungans. Fair. I mean, I yeah. do think that we're only going to see a stab as a raid Omicron. I feel like CG has a one per policy right now. Okay. Oh, that's fair. Okay. We'll see. Yeah, there's there's a lot to digest here because it does give details on the uh, mechanic upgrades going each level up. Um, but yeah, I mean, you, it's a pretty clear path forward for who's allowed and how high you'll have to take them. So. Yay! All right, guys, we have a, a decent agenda to move through. So first, let's focus a little bit about our guest. Um, you know, I already mentioned that Fatal's one of the finest theory crafters in the game, but he's also one of the strongest competitors historically. Uh, part of our interview will focus on the ups and downs of fighting the way that Fatal likes to fight. Um, We've got a, a good handful of questions to dig right into. So, first one for you, Fatal. And, and you know, the rest of you guys, uh, feel free to take the next question from me and, and ask, because I know you like doing that. But, yeah, have there been times you have considered doing what you must to climb back to the top, or are you enjoying, JC, the way you play it enough to not care? So, the... Answer is kind of just dependent on the lay of the land. Like, I mean, I'm a very competitive person, but part of why the last four months or however long it's been went the way it went is because as competitive as I like to be, I, I, I kind of know myself enough to know that, like, novelty and, like, creativity, if, if it's not there then I'm just going to lose the rest of the game and I'm going to burn out and it's like T-minus two months until I'm going to end up, like, quitting. Oof, and so the direction that I went the last few months and, like, ended up tanking rank, sure, but part of that was kind of just a defense mechanism of, like, hey, yeah, this meta is kind of ass. And so... <laughs> yeah, I it's... mean, looking back on it now, it's like, so what did I do during that time? Eh, I mean, a lot of the fights were duds, but, like, that shit kicked me onto like Zori versus Ray. Hmm? Uh, sure. That's just canon now. That shit just works. I mean, yeah, there's, true. A cron, there's a crowd that lets them cheat now. It's kind of, you know, a little bit messed up, but 
Scared. That's not going to be yeah, around forever. Uh, but you bucked the system. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give your flowers where it's deserved. Right? <laughs> I watched you, I watched theirs, and it's like, I don't give a shit what you're going to do. Everybody knows it was the, the layer of precision and all this shit like that. It's like, no, I'm still going to play the game my way. And so the fact that you, you do it regardless of win or loss, uh, especially for all of us here equally being sweaty, and you saying, fuck it, it's going to be my way or the highway, and if it's the highway, then so be it. I'll take my dip, and then we'll call it what it is. So I... I'm just gonna give it out that that something I would love to do, but I know I can't. Uh, even when I tried, it just ended up horribly, um, or I didn't get to learn anything from it. So I think it's a good point of reference. Yeah, I, I appreciate it. It definitely can end up in those spots where you just end up with a dud and like. I I, I do wish that it was more common in this game. The Wii U community worked down to just like chat with each other like I don't, I don't know if you guys but for me it's like half the time that i reach out with a dm it just gets declined it's like well <laughs> okay oh you're saying people don't answer you get back to you yeah that's i, I, yeah, I like because even like win or lose i'm always down to the chat game I, in fact i like almost want to do it more when i lose why yeah and course. so it like it's like well all right i guess they just don't want to talk. I, I think a lot of people just tend to assume it's going to be shit talk when they open up the inbox oh, and yeah. you see the message they already sent. Oh, yeah. But, you, you would be crazy not to expect that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't hold it against them, but it's just like, <laughs> we could just break that trend. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, you know, we've got GAC history now. I know that I can wait until the end of the week, but dude, the, the number of times where it's like, you try something... Yeah. And it just gets wiped for like a 65. And then like it happens again in match two. Exactly. Like, Having that happen this. in match one is when you need that communication the most. Yes. Totally. Well, you could take all of the learning, I think. Right. And it uh, goes to a point, And I'll ask this because it was a good point that Dagger brought up. And I, I think it's true. Um, so the question is the difference between how you and Tass approach streaming GAC. Right. We all know there's the, the fatal way is you basically come in and like. 45 minutes and, and everybody, even in threes, how, how the hell you do that is beyond me, man. Um, so to what extent is your last minute of solid approach a product of strategy? Is it scheduling, convenience, and or personal enjoyment preference that you just go in and do this last minute? Just and by the way, off? before before we push on, guys, is everybody hearing TJ a little soft? Like, is he does he sound a little far uh, off or is that just nice. my it would be nice for him to go into the same room as his mic. Okay, so he does sound a little far off. Okay, it's not that just sounds, me. That's me? All right, so then I'll have to, hold on. Well, we'll take it off and I'll go back in. But but either way, the the how do you, when you do your GAC, Fatal, and you do everything like last minute, right? Tass will come in, he'll do his earlier, and then we have the time to strategize. You just go in and just bombard it, like last minute. And everybody will think, and I've even watched your streams in the comments, You'll go out and tell them it's like there's no way you're going to make it in time, and here you are with 15 minutes left on a 30 minute flight or something like that. So is that is that for you a good approach, or is that just preference, or is that actually a strategy? Uh, there's actually a few reasons. Uh, so back when I started streaming, I would actually say I was probably most similar to Tass and how he currently streams. Uh, when you know you read the comments, you read discussions in servers, and like. The thing that I saw pretty often is people say, like, holy fuck, this dude takes forever. And, you know, I I do think that there's something to be said for, like, there, there's nothing wrong with taking your time and, like, that serves a specific type of audience. But, like, it, I, I already kind of do it in the back of my head as, like, yeah, there is a lot of just, like, dead air where I'm just sitting there thinking and nothing is actually happening on screen. So even like from back when I first started streaming, I I did make a concerted effort of like, okay, you need to figure out ways to speed things up. You need to start using like a matchup planner so that you can like get over that whole process of like, I using a matchup planner is actually just kind of broken, right? We, I think we can, for those of us here who do that, you can kind of agree that like going from trying to juggle 25 30 teams in your head and like assign them versus like no i just got a spreadsheet i just i just dragged them I, yes the... <laughs> yeah do do you use like the swaga for life tool or what do you use because i actually still use like an actual spreadsheet like on ironic dude I, I i literally just have a excel sheet that right. it's empty yeah. there there is zero formatting that is a white ass background with black fonts 
and I write in 15 names and then I cut and paste them in front of who they're supposed to fight. I, th that is zero form, all function. But I, I kind of wanted, like, I've thought in the past, like, man, it would be kind of neat if I, like, did some sort of, like, busy work to kind of dress this up. And it's like, no, oh, dude, I if I'm matchup planning, I want the dirtiest, fastest, just like, no, we're, we're slamming names, we're dragging this here. Get in the damn battle. That like Yeah, you're saying you'd have to generate all the team comp ideas for each round anyway, or like at least each yeah. week. Yeah. Yeah, I, I want that to be like quick and dirty, in and out. It's not pretty, you know, it feels weird when I recommend it to people. Like, yeah, just just open up a spreadsheet to make a list. But like, I I don't know. I, I usually appreciate a fusion of form and function and like want to make it look at least a little bit nice. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I we're doing dirt <laughs> like I, I just needed to get his job done that's right I, this is what i tell that like i i understand where you're coming from and i cop too like it might not be the most riveting viewing seeing me there like stew it out on stream like you were saying but like uh like this, this is what i tell people this is how the sausage is made like i, I don't apologize for that so. you play the fuck yeah no like and I even say this too like if i'm finding people who like if they cheese it's like i'll bitch a moan and gripe on stream but like Play the play the fucking win. You have nothing to be sorry for. I'm I'm the one being a crybaby bitch over here. Like it's fine. <laughs> do do what you feel you gotta do. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, so just just calling out to make sure we can hear me. Tash, you're a crybaby bitch. You yes, and and you're coming across beautifully. <laughs> Perfect. TJ. So that was clear. Yes, crybaby just bitch. Beautifully. Tash, fatal. Fatal. You can just call Tash a crybaby bitch. We do it all the time behind <laughs> the scenes for the plotting and the scheming. It, that's how we walk into the thing. Oh, Your true. hat is dumb. Your hat is dumb, and you are a crybaby bitch. So it's fine to call out the man, the myth. It's. I mean, look, man. I I, I caught myself lately as like, <laughs> I I would start to tilt the moment that I saw a cheese defense, and it's like, okay, that Re pause, v rewind. What the fuck? That's not a healthy response. Uh, um, oh yeah, the, the amount of commiserating our group has done over the one GL on defense is, you know, we we get it, we get it. <laughs> Very uh, fair. All right, who's who's asking Fatal well, the next one? Well, before before we move off that though, because sure. I, I do think it's so fascinating and have having personally experienced and and still bearing the scars of playing like trying to play real time with Fatal on that approach. It's it's so interesting to say like you started with the more sort of deliberate approach, and you know you really like in part for like you know viewer entertainment, responding to comments that you really tightened it up. I. Uh, I find it fascinating. It's so hard. I, I just say as somebody who's who's played real-time matches with you, and they're some of like, the funnest time that I've had in this game, um, also some of the most miserable, but certainly some of the funnest, <laughs> is that uh, the stress and, frankly, just the difference in experience and sort of the challenge of trying to play competitive GAC at that pace. Um, like, I, I, I feel like... <laughs> It's interesting. Like my observation, watching a ton of your stuff over the years, Fatal, is that um, like it, it's a little like you know. Sometimes people will just say, "Hey, do you want to go?" Like we'll, we'll play all defense, and everybody's going to get in the mud, and one person perhaps is more comfortable than the other with something that's just going to be a brutal slot. It's a whole different thing to do that and do it on a compressed time scale. Have that kind of adaptability. It's a huge challenge. Now it creates this like third competitor in the space uh, <laughs> and that is the clock right because yeah. it, and, and and it's it's fascinating to see like when watching a lot of your matches you're you may not feel this way but like you are i'm sure much more comfortable in that than like whatever competitor is trying to go real time how do you look at the clock and time as a competitive factor in that in those in those matches where hey they're going to go real time with you I'm so fucking glad you asked it this way. Uh, all right, can I like get weirdly in the weeds for a second here? You absolutely it, can. Dude. That <laughs> is literally what people watch this show for. Is, okay, is the uh, weeds of the top end like play? So I, I mentioned in my original answer that, that there were like multifaceted reasons, and the one that I gave is kind of the main one. But it it didn't get to this degree until the other factors kind of drove in. So. The other main factor, and honestly, the, the thing that actually, like, triggered... Because I, I used to attack at the start of rounds. And the what? thing... Yes. 
Yes. I don't think I ever remember that. I, 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 I'm trying to go back in my head when it's gone. I, I don't well, remember ever. This is back towards the era before GEC got reworked, and we had like a, a loose oh. ladder of ranking. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So I, yeah you're min-maxing. You're talking about light, light, G, uh, light GP and going in, and your GAC characters were top-notch, and you're... you're okay, okay. That, well, that tracks. That was the thing. I, I didn't... I I know I'm not like the underdog GP. I mean, I guess I'm still like less GP, but like I I don't really consider myself to be an underdog from just like the way accounts are balanced these days. But like coming into the game, the only reason why I'm min max is because I wanted to fight people and game players, and I was so fucking tilted at the matchmaking being like, okay, today you're gonna fight somebody who has like twenty five percent of your GLs and thirty percent of your Zeta count, and it's like, what what is this system in? So yeah, when GSC got reworked, that, that that was like everything I wanted in terms of like, okay, we we can actually like do some dirt. But the thing that happened is when GSC got reworked and like the period leading up to and after that is it became pretty quickly clear that uh, people cheat. And the uh, it, it was disappointing for me, but like, again, I try to take people out like their word or like their intent versus their actions. And it was pretty clear that it was just like a cultural difference of like people would check your stream and like look at the teams that were on back wall and stuff, stuff like that. And and like it, it wasn't even like, oh, I would find out from someone else after the fact. They were just openly saying it to me. Like in their mind, it wasn't stream sniping or, or stream shading or whatever. It was just part of yeah, the game for them. Yeah. So they didn't ask you to put it out there, so why the hell not in their mind? Yeah, and so it it was kind of just this response. It was like, holy shit, like cheating is rampant. And so that that is what kicked off the ball rolling down the hill of this sort of style at this point is, okay, if they're going to wait until I start attacking because they want to see what I posted, then A, I'm moving it to the end of the round just to try to protect against, you know, as many schedules as possible that like or ideally at least that we would go at the same time but then b if you really 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 want to know what's back wall then okay the clock is going to become a factor here because if the clock runs down low enough the original thought was as you said it becomes a third player in the match and if the clock runs down low enough it doesn't matter that you know what's back wall because we're not going to clear back wall anyway we're not going to have time to do it and so at that point it it kind of trivializes the advantage and we can play on neutral grounds. Um, See, I, I like do this stuff. That makes so much sense on your, I'm going to call it in, in air quotes, if you can't see me, the fatal defense of why it is what it is. And so top brick heavy, because when you look at it and know anybody's going into you knowing you're basically setting the board and whoever's going to come up with the better off meta, we'll call it, you know, off meta for what it is. Uh, it, it also tracks the because then now you get to play not only the, the time, but the, the tough defense as well and how you play that defense and how you work around that system. Yeah, it it has evolved in some really weird ways since then, too, of like, I, I, I feel like I post a very honest defense now where like, I mean, I tend to like think of an angle at the start of week one. And then I kind of just run that defense for the entire season and it involves pretty much zero baits at this point. Like it's pretty front loaded. And so, I, I it, like it feels weird to kind of leave those parts of the game behind, but at the same time, I I, I don't know. There, there's almost a certain positive aspect to it where you can kind of feel out a player more if you're basing everyone off of the same criteria and experience at that point of like, okay, well, this person did this, and this person's like yeah. behaving or scoring differently, so maybe that I can like glean some information from that usual predictability. And that doesn't have to be a strategy that's gone forever to you either. It's like almost sitting on the shelf ripening. Like if you were ever to decide, oh, hey, I, I, I am going to swap up. I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to hide the ball on an opponent. You can draw on it. You, not, you haven't in yes. the longest time, but it's there. Uh, I think that's really cool. Yeah, it, it's a very interesting strategic back pocket option. And like, honestly, if I do it, it's like the ultimate show of respect in my eyes is like, fuck. Okay, I like we I, we need to explore that avenue and like make use of every part of the animal <laughs> because you're so used to telegraphing the same thing for so long that like all right, we're going all out. I'm gonna try doing a swap or doing some backwall shit and see if you can catch someone out. 
That's awesome. Great question, uh, Sasha. I, I, I know that one wasn't even one written down, but boom, banger. Great question. Oh, I, I want to say, too, is like, I, I'm glad that you said that it was like enjoyable experience. I, I do think what you say is right, that at this point, I've probably practiced this to the point where, like, honestly, if anyone's ever playing with me or playing against me and you want to go at the same time or whatever, it's like, especially if I know you're like, I guess, how much do you really know anyone online? But like, as much as you can know someone, if you if you don't want to like wait down the clock, if someone just messaged me and said like, hey, you want to go like 80, 90 minutes before a round done? I'd be like, yeah, okay. Like, it doesn't have to be this, like, doomsday waiting down the clock. It's like, because I do agree that, like, at this point, I clearly have practiced speed GAC more than anyone else. <laughs> like, definitely it, probably do have an advantage. It, it's fascinating, I'll just say, like, from my own experience, because that's not my typical MO. I mean, of late, I've done more of my attacks in a concentrated manner, at least <laughs> relative to, say, tasks, right? These are the far other end of the spectrum. But, like, um, I... Uh, Having having done that real time with you, like I don't know, half dozen plus times, um, the evolution almost just a matter of sort of developing and continuing to build the muscles and some of this you know strategical perspective that comes with it. Like uh, the I, I would say you know probably the fourth or fifth time we matched up versus the first was a huge difference in terms of stress level. And just um, like, I, I think kind of just comprehension of how to play the game. And that included like evolving strategies of like, hey, I probably need to retain a little more flexibility. I probably like, you know, because I don't know what's going to be in your back wall, but I know I'm going to be sweating it. <laughs> it's like, I, I probably want like a bigger toolkit and I need to do something that's unique and different for you on the back wall, but I probably can't overextend with it. Um, and th with the added element to be completely honest with it of like, I know like it, you know, in, in, in fatal matchups, like people watch and I don't want to get hard stuff, right? Like I, I, I don't hmm. want to get embarrassed by like, <laughs> uh, oh, I really stretched on my back wall and there it is real time with fatal. I'm going back and forth and it's like, hey, Sasha put nine attacks on one of his front wall GLs and hasn't done anything. <laughs> right? Like there's this sort of back of the mind um, anxiety about that. So it was just really, it, it was a cool experience. And it was honestly, it, it was not quite a completely different game, but like a different stimulant in the game. And that was awesome. Uh, so anyway, it's great to have that type of mix as long as it's not burning you, man. That's that's the thing. Like you said uh, earlier in our conversation here, that sustainability and you finding something that's going to keep you engaged with the game. It's in all of our interest that that be the case. I mean, you said to yourself, I agree with you, is it, it's given me some of the most fun matches I've ever had. Like, I, I mm -hmm. th there is a beauty to the well-measured Galaxy of Heroes, you know, being able so watching someone be able to like fully understand all the mechanics and then like precisely plan out answers and then execute and whatever like again that that's why it's like i when i started streaming originally the task i played like you that that's the shit i was doing but right. especially if as a streamer i have some minor agency over when someone's going to want to play Taking it to a speed GAC, you know, in a perfect world, I would rather see you just introduce a speed GAC mode. I, I saw you. I saw that last stream. I was there live when you got when you realized that your opponent had scouted your VOD or whatever. <laughs> uh, and, and you said, I will never do this again. I will never do this again. I saw your last like mm. early -er stream. I was I remember it. Because you were pissed. It was great. Uh, I, again, I, I've always said this. I, I really feel like Galaxy Heroes exists in a sort of bizarro world bubble. Like, when you really break down all the characteristic aspects of most competitive games in the industry and compare it to Galaxy Heroes, I mean, even just, like, basic structural stuff, YouTube is the main platform of choice for, like, content streaming in mm -hmm. Galaxy Heroes. It's like, what, what are you talking about? What? Why? And then you get down to like the nitty gritty is that extends to like streaming culture. Like, the, you know, in most other games that I've played, someone stream sniping would be a huge scandal. And that person would be like, I don't know yeah. what the word is, but ostracized. Right, like, ostracized, like, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. That, that would be a mark on your character that like follows you. And here is just like, 
Oh uh, yeah, right. Like ultimately most speaking, the, sorry. Uh, most of the people I'm fighting, though, like, or at least most of the people that are willing to communicate with me, if I tell them that I'm a streamer, and if you wouldn't mind, you know, this is what I'm planning on streaming. Do you think you'd be able to clear my front wall before then? Uh, you know, almost almost all of them say yes. It, like, and the ones that say I, no are I, usually saying no because of a schedule restriction, and they're straight up about right. it. Right. I would think anybody at the top though would want to try to that's do what it. I'm saying. You would think so. We, we're we all, all we're have, all think, in it for the real I think we competition. All have this thing, you would right. Think. I think like like getting matched up with the streamers and getting stuff like that. I I I know for me personally, I'll go out of my way to try to bend over backwards just to make sure that the the honor is there. Yeah. That that I can at least open the wall so you can do your story and we can go back and forth later. But I I want to make sure there's no surprises and I I I, I personally and I, I call it bias call it whatever you want think most will try to do that um i know I, I am more inclined to do it for some than for others <laughs> i i will say that's true as well but i know who others part, is like, if I go, right but, but but i also know to be fair though dagger you'll talk a lot of shit, but, but you're type. but you're I also, also but, but your schedule is also entirely crazy for anybody who actually knows you so it's not yeah. you'll you'll see it to be a dick but you you would in reality if you had the time yeah, yeah. I mean, ima imagine, imagine, like, fatal schedules his gag, his gag at like the end of gag. I have to find like a ninety-minute period where no one will bother me, so I can I, do my gag. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> but, but I'll do the same thing. Sometimes. But that's, but that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. I will at least try to open the thing just to give a respect for the person trying to do it. So there's no, it's the era of competition, right? And if it, if it's the ability to go live and do a one to one, like either matching at the same time, we're going to attack at the same time, or you go, I go type thing, to me is the most fun. And also, I would agree with Sasha. Is is the most um, I just, uh, yeah, skill based. I did based. that once. I did that once with Infinite way back in the day. Hmm. Um, that yeah, right right when he got one. Well, I guess it was that far back. It's when he got the account from like Angel Chess. When he had the, when he got that big account. Hmm. And uh, I was able to go fight for fight with him, and that was a ton of fun. No it, it's some of the coolest experiences of this game to see your defense in action. And it's a yeah. damn yeah. shame that we don't. Hundred percent. I, I think I, that, I, I love that aspect. I only want to call out is if you also look at the biggest, most like watched or viewed, and I think we can go back and look at it, or when it was content creator versus content creator, and yeah. they were going live, right, and then getting to watch all this stuff happen at the same time, and then you're getting to root for your team or whatever it was was like like Super Bowl event things where you would see everybody on everywhere and it was just going nuts because those were some of the biggest things. Beto, when you were going against uh, Arnold and those those things like that, when you were watching Tass and, uh, Tass and you go back and forth, those to me and watching it live in real time and seeing what was happening and then you guys are like playing cards close to the chest, nobody's watching each other's thing and it was a fair fight for some of the best experiences I've ever seen that would make me love or made me love Star Wars and the GAC. Fair, fair. It's, Guys, let's, it's let's move to the... Sorry. Was, no, no, no. Go ahead, Fatal. By all means. I don't know. I was just going to say, it, yeah, like, the Arnold fight and the fact that I was able to line up de debuting the original Treya versus Lord Vader counter with the Arnold fight was still, like, probably peak highlight for yeah. me in this game. of just, like, the, the timing of things coming together. I'm like, hey, by the way, I've been cooking some really goofy shit. <laughs> and also it's a GAC. That was, yeah, it was very fantastic. Fun. Yeah, it's a good opportunity to highlight it. For I, sure. I can, I can, I can dig back into personal history and share one example where I thought I had something really good, but getting a chance to see what you know, a, a kind of concocted defense in action, and it was a match with you, Fatal. I don't know if you would call this, but um, it was uh, at that point, it was very early to set SLK with Sith Empire, well before Malgus, but it was like DR Malik and other stuff. And um, it hadn't been set a lot as I'd looked at .dg history, and um, there were quite a few hard stops with it, and I was super excited to see it in action. So this is great. I'm playing Fatal. I'm going to set this up. Uh, and I think, like, I was super excited to see it, and there's probably not been a bigger gap between sort of excitement and expectation and then realized experience when uh like you, you were sort of setting up and i could tell you'd obviously set a very hard d i think i'd gone through a bunch of uh, maybe all your stuff or a good portion of your stuff at that point and i'm like i don't know that he can get through this and then you clicked on imperial troopers and what oh, and it was yeah, the first yeah. time i had seen that <laughs> and i'm like son of 
effing bit. Like, it was so soul-crushing, but that's what this game's about. Like, to actually see this, like, innovative, kind of, like, out of the blue. Um, soul-crushing for me, but deeply informative for the community. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, I expect anybody watching this would certainly know who you are at this point, but, but some of the, you know, the unique moddings that you've come up with on teams for the years have been everlastingly meta-defining. So it's been really cool to be a beneficiary of all that. The Trey versus Vader will always still remain to me the the creme de la creme of it works. It only works for Fatal. And, and He's the only one who said it. When, when, when Relic 9 was new, right? When Relic 9 was yeah. brand new and he's putting it on Scion and this is the moneymaker. It's like, I'm never going to get to do this. But man, it is so cool. I would love to, to, to do what he's doing. That shit's not happening. This dude is bananas crazy. And my favorite I, one is the Malik faster than DR. That one has paid the highest dividends over years <laughs> in this game. In 3v3. It just had like a three-year dynasty for no fucking reason. It's hideous, <laughs> man. It's, it's actually still pretty good. It's still pretty good, I, I have to say. All right, guys, let's move into the next question here. Uh, none of you decided to seize up on it, so boo-hoo for you. But, uh, yeah, unironically, uh, Fatal, do you, do you worry about high blood pressure or hypertension? Because uh, it's, it's very fair that I'm the one that gets to ask this because, like, I, I need to have a beer on him when I'm watching you. Like, you, you see that I feel stressed when I have, like, I usually plan yeah, for three hours 100%. to do my Grand Arena on stream, right? Like, if I have less than two, I am stressed. Watching you start, it's like, great, we have, like, 43 minutes and go. It's like, uh, Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, and, and, I, and I, I feel like I need a big burn a cigarette when I watch you do your gag. <laughs> <laughs> for real, <laughs> I just okay. love, I love the we're not gonna have enough time. It's never gonna be enough time. I, I just watch everybody just like like bombarding you with there's not enough time. And then what's stupid is when you you know when you do get to get it right, everything goes just right, and you've got like five minutes left. And the the, the aha bitch is is just amazing. <laughs> you don't say it, but just to watch it because they're oh. talking shit to you, and you watch the smirk right as the shit. Those are the best. Those are the best ones. Where it's like all right, you guys kept talking shit. All right, I'm gonna go smoke a cigarette because I'm all done now. Ha ha, bitch. Well, so you're asking if I'm nervous with the time pressure. Uh, here's the other secret answer is I operate really fucking well under pressure for whatever reason. Uh, it's, uh, it is almost kind of made me a better player because I don't have time to second guess my gut. And historically, I, I tended to second guess my gut a lot when I streamed at the start of a round. And it would like every single fucking time it, it would be like, okay, why did I not trust my gut? And then I would just keep on not trusting my gut regardless. Uh, no, I, I like in the moment when I'm under time pressure, I've, I've kind of just always operated under time pressure. So it's a comfort zone for me. I'm, I'm mostly just like, okay, it's usually about seven, maybe eight minutes for ships. And then there's 25 minutes for remaining fights. So, you know, 10 fights, two and a half minutes per fight. Fucking God bless the PC beta as well. That... <laughs> yes, thank God for the load times. It's crazy. I mean, the load times, the play time is, is just stupid. I mean, so when I first started streaming GAC and had the idea of like wanting to do YouTube edits for, to like trim it down, the target that I had for like okay, th this would be a good trimmed down version of a GAC match. I wanted it to be trimmed down to like forty minutes. And now that's just like the runtime for a GAC. I'm close to hitting that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's something to behold because uh, you know you you are pretty routine with being able to get it all done. Um, but it's it's still nevertheless like I'll, I'll see you. It's it posted. It's like there's like 38 minutes when he posted on Discord. What is he talking <laughs> about? He's not finishing shit. And then you do. All right, who's got the next one? Step on up. Don't be shy. Okay, fine. D be shy. All right, when no, it comes... guys, man. When, when it comes I'll to the theory... It. Oh, I'll, no, no. I'll... Okay, okay, TJ, take I, it away. I, I can do mine. Okay, do fine. Mine. See? Fight nice. See? Sorry. I was, uh, all right, I was on mute. So, uh, all right, Fiddle. So, when it comes to theory crafting, given the lack of a sandbox mode in this game... What what are your go-to approaches to be able to flesh out and assess comps and strategies? You know, like, you, I know you love to get 
deep down into the kits, the mechanics, and 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 find interesting combinations. Like, how do you play in the sort of the limited universe of options uh, that that this game presents? Uh, I th- most of what I do, it, it's a combination of I kind of just try to play out fights mentally, but you you really need aids to do shit like that of like you know, I'll usually have SWH.GG up so I can, like, like something that I'll do fairly often is I'll, I'll actually just, like, scroll through the entire game's roster, like, you know, skim through it real quick, but, like, if, if I have certain mechanical associations for certain characters, or, like, if you use that filter where you can, like, sort for a certain mechanic, uh, that can kind of help you filter to whatever you're looking for fairly quickly of, like, I, you know, back in the day with the Thrawn lead against Ray thing, it, it, that was like probably one of the most organic processes. Of it. it was literally just like a call and response of like, okay, here's a problem. Okay, well, this is a way to solve it. Okay, well, mm-hmm. that creates this. Okay, well, you could add this to solve it of like, okay, well, I know I need to fracture Ray. It's like, okay, well, what's happening to the Thrawn? Okay, well, the Resistance Hero bros are going after him, and they're damaging him, and they're debuffing him, and they're killing him. And so I did a roster scroll, and ended up happening on the Thrawn lead itself, where it was like, oh shit, he actually, he actually has reactive tools. He gets turn meter when he gets debuffed. Poe's debuffing him, that's sick. And then problem number two is like, okay, well, shit, but he's still like getting stunned or whatever. Enter Watt, who was already like in the fucking picture for Vader anyway, but right, it was this back and forth of like, well, okay, if Thrawn is tanking AI aggro, you can actually just drop the tank slot and gain a like team theory crafting slot back. And so, re- like, when I'm trying to theory craft, really, I'm just trying to break a fight down to it, its barest, like, questions and answers, problem solving. Work through it on that level for like the first. I would say like five or ten turns or just as much as you need to get a fight rolling and then you just go test it in arena and see how the rest flows from there and whether or not it's like a winnable playable scenario. But yeah, like on, honestly, if it's someone looking to practice it, it, I think a huge way or a huge amount of help comes from if you can get familiar with the kids enough that you can kind of think through the first few turns of a fight and like a good way that I would say to go about it is like go into a matchup screen especially now that you can see the enemy team and so like you can select your team you can see the enemy team and then if you have a loose idea of like okay well I know this character is fastest and so like let's say you're fighting Supreme Leader Kylo it's like okay I know SLK is fastest he's going to poke someone I have a tank so he's going to poke the tank turn two well, Hux is going to be fastest unless I do something. Right? Like, you can work through that daisy chain. I'm not saying you fucking mentally play an entire fight. I don't, I don't know if there are any Galaxy Heroes players that can do that. If they can, like, <laughs> the, they would be eligible for need a best of all calling. time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, right, like, the, the further into a fight you can get with that, that, that is kind of one of the skill aspects I would say is that's kind of where you can really effectively start to learn to improv fights, especially if it's for off meta stuff and kind of find interesting interactions that let you play. Yeah. Just, it makes a ton of sense. And, and I like, I, I don't do it to the level of depth and creativity that you do, but that is the same kind of like event kind of sequencing. I try to map out at a very early stage and just go, Hey, you know, Am I cooking with something here, or am I way on base? Uh, and it's just, uh, yeah, it, it, it's interesting to hear you go through that. And so much of that then really comes to, yeah, like you're saying, you do need to start looking through the various characters, sort of that universe of options. But um, doing that kind of reasonably really means you've got pretty darn good command of folks, all the various kits out there, the uniques, all these other different aspects. And that's just getting to be a larger and larger um data set sort of but uh very cool to hear very cool to hear who's got the next question should be dagger yeah you've been the uh you're the late arrival it's the least you could do Ahem. <laughs> all right tj point. come come to my rescue tj 
Yeah, yeah, it's all right. It's great, great flight. Dagger's always so responsive. Mm -hmm. Top tier, top tier. Appreciate yeah, you. Good yeah. show. Good show, yeah. sir. And, and and his hat is dumb because I know he wants. Oh wait, he doesn't oh. wear a hat. Never mind. No, his oh. his fro is dumb. All right. So anyway, um, so I, I think we already asked it, Fatal, but it, I think I know you are prone to just kind of leaving it as is. Um, do you actually do? Because I know you you leave in the beginning of a of a match, right, or a season when we're coming to GAC. Do you, do you actually do any scouting, or you just say fuck it and leave it, and we're just gonna deal with what it is? Because like I said, we all know the fatal defense, right? We know how what it is. It's basically everything up front, and if you can beat the wall down, and you can take whatever's in the back, because it's all gonna be equally as strong. Do you do you ever decide that you're going to change something up, or do you just leave it as is, right? Do this? Do you actually do the scouting, or do you just leave it, right? How does that work for you? Yeah. So when GSC first got reworked, I scouted like crazy, and then like you know, pretty much within that first season. I mean, that, that was such a cool season that like it kind of created like this first tournament structure. But like people were people who usually don't care about JC were actually kind of following too. It, it was such a cool thing. But like by the end of that, it was already like pretty clear to me as like, hey, this is not going to be sustainable. Like the, the I could feel burnout not creeping in, but it was like in the conversation. And I was like, okay, this is not going to fly. And so pretty early on, I made an effort to become comfortable with just not scouting. And I, I guess that's kind of where the heavy defense came in as well, is needing to be able to learn to roll with the punches, but also having some extra levels of flexibility that it's okay if you drop some battles and you know what the call and response is for, okay, well, should I need to clean this up? But I, I know what my answer to that is already. Um, that, for me, is why defense has been so fun for so long, is because you really... Not to say the defense play styles don't benefit from prep. If anything, in some ways, they benefit more. But as long as the GAC gets muddy, uh, you don't really need to scout as much. At that point, it's more about people's ability to roll with the punches rather than uh, to precisely plan and prepare leading into things. Um Mostly what I do nowadays is I, I mostly just cook cook on defense. And then at the end of a week, I'll look at the defensive results and be like, okay, did any teams suck or did any teams get beaten by a team? Or I'm like, whoa, that's not the trade that I'm looking to make. Can I tech against that is kind of more the process that I try to stick with. Uh, I don't tend to plan for offense, and I'm pretty sure that's going to burn me horribly this season because... Shit like Gungans and SLK. Unforgiving. Gonna... Yes. Yes. Uh, we will see how that goes, but if anything, I think that can make for some decently entertaining television, so it's kind of a win-win. I mean, it's a lose-win, but it's a win-win. <laughs> it's an intel win. That, you know, that's, how, <laughs> that's how I choose to interpret my losses. Yeah. Yeah. That's what, that's what, I, that's what I call all right. I have taken a lot of my faith that set 15 will create some explosive defensive results that will allow me to not know what the fuck I'm doing. Good, good. Yeah, we have some related uh, questions that will come up later that will touch on that. And uh, how organic that is. We'll, we'll transition out of the main interview here, Fatal. Uh, there's some other questions that folks have had for you, knowing that you were going to be the special guest, but we'll get to those later in the show. Let's talk a little bit about what's going on for us uh, going into this week one of five versus five. The the first you know subheading here is what preparations we've been doing. Uh, now we don't have to go round robin here. I mean, and 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 I personally don't have a lot to say. I've just been tweaking some mods, making sure I have, you know, uh, at least 20 plus level nine, uh, set 15 crons so that I'm covered for when set 14 expires at the end of this season. Um, not any really special reworks, um, for anybody going out of threes into fives. What about you guys? Marking all of these stupid tunes for the raid so that I can narrate them if necessary. Well, you Sir, mean R9. You R9. You R9, you cheap bastard. That's right. They <laughs> added a new tier <laughs> that requires Relic 9. Welcome to hell. We're going to go to R first. 
You have to get the R8 first. That is technically <laughs> right, yes. Uh, you didn't have your ETH con to relegate this whole time? Eat shit. <laughs> It may be sad, but it may be true. So while you're talking shit and telling them to eat shit, it may actually be a thing we don't know yet. <laughs> no, seriously, that's mission. Uh, not really mods or relics. Uh, otherwise. Okay, so nothing <laughs> special. Yeah, you were breaking up a little bit, just so you know. But yeah, okay, I, I hear you. How about the rest of you guys? Any any specific uh, modding tricks or... Uh, additional relics to, to shore up something that you're anticipating for here going into week one? For me, Mine's it's good. kind of... You go first. No, no, no. Hey, I'm more interested in yours. Trust me. <laughs> yours is going to be more off the wall, so I'm definitely interested in what you have to say. Uh, for me, it's been a lot of trying to make up for... I mean, I didn't miss those the last couple of 5v5 seasons, but I definitely wasn't paying attention, and so this is the first one that I'm kind of trying to you know, set 15's got me curious I I'm I'm putting a little bit of faith in that like, time in will equal some fun or interest or whatever and so there was definitely an aspect of like, okay, I want to theorycraft but also, I'm kind of more so just like, doing recent history research um and I don't know that I have answers to those questions just yet. It seems like there's a whole lot of back and forth of, like, different forks of, right? Lord Vader of, like, okay, how sacred is Seer on defense? How meaningful is something like Lord Vader, Vader Malakos on defense to try to make an extra entry that kind of throws some shade at bo Mandalore. I mean, okay, I will say. Malakos does throw shade at bo Mandalore. At least as long as Maul puts blasts on her. She will fall down and permanently expire and remind people that the team doesn't actually have a tank unless you break factional limitations. Uh, stuff like that. Stuff like Ray and this whole... I mean, Bane's gonna be Bane, but I just need Ray to be bane That's fine. But the whole Starkiller versus uh, everyone seems to be holding Malikos, so that's... Is there a way to... If Seer is sacred, then Cal is sacred to Seer. So then you're on Barris, and then you're asking questions of like, well, how interesting is Zori Holdo? And then from there, it's like, well, can I, can I make Ray do anything on defense? to try to fuck with Malakos and Starkiller to try to force Bane. And I don't know that I have answers to those questions. I'm kind of trying. I haven't actually, like, finalized the comp, but it definitely seems like uh, GSC Inside had some data towards, like, JTR to try to cleanse off any offense down shenanigans or, you know, push off Starkiller a little bit. Overinvested Barris. I just took her to relegate. I was kind of crushed that she wasn't in the raid list, but shit happens. Uh, mm -hmm. And then from there, it's going to be a question of like L3 or I'm not sure who, but yeah, I don't know. I Someone asked me today is like, are you back in the kitchen cooking? And I'm like, I don't know that I can promise that I'm cooking yet. I think that'll be determined after I see the results, but I'm trying to turn the pilot light on because... Yeah, I don't know. So, this so, is kind so of the, the first. theory craft you're working out is really an anti Bane Ray, which so far, as as far as we've seen, nothing's really standing up. So that's that's the goal here, though. That's an interesting project. Oh no no no! I I I, I I'm accepting Bane. I'm handshaking Bane. I'm mostly just trying to theory craft against the other predators, with like Seer fair, or fair, fair. Starkiller. Oh, I see. Nah, I, that dude's gonna win. CG, CG directly written his kit. He's going to win. Don't try. Yeah, yeah. Just, and I don't know that that's that gonna change. Yeah, that yeah. Kron goes away. The last time, the last time Starkiller had bulk, he kind of dunked Ray. So I think that's kind of where Fatal's going to as well. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean, so that's really all I'm trying to do here is, okay, which which battles can I win? Which battles can I? not win and then what space does that create if i like just give them what they want it's like hey here's my brain you can bane it hey here's my lord vader you can bo on mandalore it like does that create any room for like 
you know, JMK kind of looks bo katanable but if they're thinking, hey, there's a Lord Vader, I would be stupid not to use mm. bo on that. That's that's not nothing. I don't know. Lord, Lord Vader gets a little bit of value for you there. That's fair. I can see that. Uh, Sasha, TJ, how about you guys? Any specific prep you're putting in here? Start of the season. Go ahead, TJ. I'll follow you. Mine's very light. I'm probably going to be in the same boat. I'm, I'm not going to be as deep as where Fatal is at because that dude goes to the kitchen. That dude goes in to, like, really cook some shit up. Um, I'm a lazy chef. My shit's in the microwave. So I know we're going to talk about them later, but it's it's the pieces for Queen, Amidala's team, and then the dial-in of facing the, the true power uh, that is the Gungan culture. Um so I know there's talk of like what that's going to be like, but that's that's kind of where we're shaking it up, right? Because we all know what the Queen team is going to have the three, but it's who's the fourth and the fifth. We know what Datacron is going to be on there, but how's it going to play? So it's like I'm, I'm playing with a couple of ideas of what I think and what I've seen. Um, again, as I keep saying it, and I'll keep calling it out, you know, thank your content creator for a reason. So I've got to see some things where it's like, that's an interesting concept, and how is this going to play out? I, I know we're going to dig on it more, but... But that's really been my prep is is how am I going to throw something that's going to be that's really going to cause uh, a possible problem? Because we haven't really faced the true power of what the Gungans are going to do. We haven't really faced the true power of what Queen Amidala is going to do yet. We just don't know. Fair, fair. So I, I really like, don't have much. I'm okay. sorry. Go ahead, Phil. No, I was just going to say, I feel like Amidala is going to be a bit of an opportunist. I, I, she's going to be very beatable on her own, but if other people can make a mess, then she will be very happy, I think. Mm -hmm. Fair. How about it, Sasha? What you got? You know, I, I really don't have much. I mean, uh, to be honest, I <laughs> kind of for my own like health and sustainability reasons, more or less took the last week off. And then as I look ahead to the next week in GAC, I'm like adrift in a sea of erodiums. I have six erodium accounts in my, oh my GAC bracket. <laughs> so like it's going to be um, I will end up with, I think, at best three and possibly, yeah, I believe three GAC matches over a month long period here. So um, I, that's guess. leaving me in. Yeah, it's leaving me in a bit of a wait and see, and uh, it, I do think it's going to be an interesting week. I do think for you know all the sort of possibilities, that sort of like preliminary considerations that Fatal threw out and TJ was talking about, I think this will be an interesting week, um, as we often do on this show. Want to mention? Watch your content creators, what are, whoever's out there. Like, I mean, you've got great examples on this show, you know, with Fatal and Tasnix. I'm going to be very curious to see. Um, you know, how what you have cooked, uh, you know, actually turns out and just to see uh, what the meta is like. Um, and then at a at a rate of one match per week, get to experience it personally. Um, I, I do think like it just and before I completely move off that because you guys can hear my my uh, bitchiness about not having matchups. How cool would it be if they were to fix this erodium issue like that, the issue with so many accounts that don't belong in, in the leaderboard CG, out there fix your damn game but if they just did it by resetting everything and going back to that i have just such fond memories of that initial like tournament like feel where everybody was just re-engaged or at that point really engaged maybe for the first time in gac i would love that like i i have no doubt for all of us on on this and i'm sure anybody that's taking the time to listen to us that would be like Super inspiring. So I, I would, I'd, I'd love to see that happen. Well, something like that won't get slapped by people who have everything for like a month either. Because I have everything now too. <laughs> yeah, reset it. <laughs> what were you saying, Fatal? <clears throat> when they first did it, I. Sorry. No, no. I was gonna say, wasn't that the time where like Star Killer and Omicrons were new as well? It, it was yes. just like this insane coalescence yes. of like. Hey, is the first competitive structure, and also here's all these crazy new things. Like, hey, Mara Jade's in the mix. Well, like, what the fuck are you? T so, like, okay, but well, what if I do Mara separate and then, then I do Darth Vader with Star Killer? Like, oh man, it, it, what a cool time for the game. It like it was, it was. so great. I, I remember like during that time in those tournaments, or like it felt like a tournament that sort of early stage where if there wasn't an active streamer going on at that point you could go into i don't know some random discord server and somebody would be streaming in front of like you know 15 to 20 random friends who were just interested in watching gac like it was uh it felt so alive and and, and fun at that point but 
All right. No, fair. Um, you know, as an extension here, I don't know if you guys put uh, a lot of real change going out of three versus three into five versus five into your data crons, but did you learn any lessons coming out of threes uh, that made you say, oh man, I, I've got to build up one or two just so I have X for starting out week one of fives? In short, the answer for me was just to re-roll some of the garbage stats on some of the level nines that I, w I found myself using and needing to use last three season and just resenting that they just had a mixed bag of just Garbo stats. Ooh. Daggers down in the mines. Yep. All right, well, make sure that you keep the light on on that hard hat, and when you get out of the tunnel, come on back and talk to us. <laughs> yeah, it's still not, still not there. Still not there. How about the rest of you guys? We'll give Dagger a moment to come back to us. I think it was fair. Um mine i'll take your point to the the stats uh but we we walk into a wealth of data crons now right anybody who's at the top had had a good amount we went wide when it was looking at to make sure we had so it's just making sure we're going to need it like um a possible you know damage reduction or having the the same thing towards like ability block or just something else that's going to be my back pocket just in case i'm going to need it for whatever we're doing mm-hmm Mm -hmm. No other key crowns for the rest of you guys? Anything else that you made a, a special effort to make sure you got? Uh, I, the only thing that, that I'd say I added, and maybe it's at the end of last week that I focused on, was getting um, a light side and a dark side crit avoidance focused cron. I just mm. think um, there's such an abundance of like offensive stats and like just hard hitting crons out of this. But um, to just have a few, a couple options, one on each side to just sort of throw in here or there to, to mix it up for survivability, um, maybe on defense, but maybe on offense too. Uh, so I, I did that uh, and made sure I got, you know. What, what number? So I'm going to probe like we were probe here, right? What number, when you say crit avoidance, would you call it crit avoidance? I, I shot for like 75%. Oh, so you went, you went full. Okay, so that, see, see, that's awesome. That's a good call out. Yeah, like so, pretty pretty darn high. Obviously, you know, a bulk of uh, you know whichever side it was on level three, but um, but yeah, I, I figured I'd, I'd do seventy five percent. It's a big goal. It's a good one. Yeah, yeah. One of the things that I ran into in three v three, and I don't know if it'll be true in fives, is because we have bulk, the offense stats on those crons matter so much more. So I got punished a few times during three v three for. Having like some crit chance crit avoidance rolls on some of my crons and my opponent's champ dude's just doing way more damage than mine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very fair. All right. Um, let's see here. Next one on the list. Uh, yeah, Gungans. So are we expecting them still to be uh, generally on defense? And um, if not, you know what what kind of comes to mind on what you want to. Think about how you're looking to apply them. And also, um, you know, we, we found in the last three versus three that the Jar Jar level nine, you know, proved to be very powerful, more powerful than NAS. Are we still thinking that's the case? NAS is just kind of untenable against their main predator, right? That, that blind effect truly just makes that level nine not exist. Like it... It's unfortunate, but it's just the kind of the lay of the land. I'm still kind of curious about Tarpol's Crown, but I, I, I don't know. Charger Jar Binks 9 causes enough chaos that I think, for the most part, that's kind of what I'm looking for the faction to do. Mm -hmm. But I'm not that curious enough for Tarpol's yet. Mm -hmm. But you're still, but your posture's still thinking on defense. I, I'm going to run most every decent looking team on defense until. My cold dead hands. Very fair. Placed in yeah, are, are, are you familiar with Fatal? Testing? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's uh, one of those I'm things. Still, I'm still posting zero on defense. Like 
this is one of those questions that people ask, and it's like this is I kind of a, this is kind of one of those things that people should work their you know as as they get more experience, build up that intuition that it's like yeah, we're, the the more difficult teams GL or not, it, there's a real incentive to put those on defense to to jam people up. So I'm I'm right there with you guys. Yeah, no defiance for until me. Until people prove they can consistently pad man, it's going to be on defense. Something about Padme consistently. Uh, he's on Pad, yeah, oh, he's saying both Padme can be on defense. People can consistently. Yeah, if people can consistently. Uh-huh. I, I know what he's trying to say because he, I, I think the one thing that that we know is going to be true, right? Padme is going to be with JMK. It's just a, it's just a factor that if you're going to have it there, the the Padme on the team is one of the best things you can do, and how yeah. you're going to, right? Because threes with JMK. Uh, I know people were trying to get kind of shifty and doing was it Padme and and Cat and a and a threes team. Well, now you've got the full Monty, and how's this going to work out for you in fives? Right? Mm-hmm. It's not so it's not so cut and dry on what you're going to be able to do, and how this is going to work out, and the damage is going to go there. So it's it's I think that's where uh, well, I think well, we can pretty much expect all of us are going to be dealing with that where it's like. Um, is your cat faster? Is my cat faster? How's this gonna look? Well, we're not gonna mirror, so here's what we're gonna do here. And having that, you know, having that is that a factor that's in the the back wall? Is it in the front wall? Is it in the fatal wall? We know it's gonna be there, and and it's your problem now. Go and deal with it, and just those things like that. So it's like it's true with Dagger's call out, and of course, uh, screw Sasha for bringing it up for everybody that Padme would be the go-to counter for the Gungans. So without that being there, that does open the door of to what else is going to work um, when you have the full Gungan team and not just three. Mm-hmm. Very fair. I will say, I do think the Gungan design, like, even if you're a efficiency player, I think it kind of behooves you to post the Gungans right now just because of how volatile they can be. Mm-hmm. As you said, with that Jar Jar little nine, it's particularly heinous. And the way that Jar Jar and Phalanx were pinging off each other, yeah, man, um, that was in threes, so and nasty. Now you're having the mm-hmm. other two attackers there to to intercede <laughs> as well. Like, yeah, that's it's uh, it sounds like a mess. Um, about the JMK Padme thing, so you guys, do you guys think that those are kind of tied at the hip here, at least for this first week? You think that that's like. You know, obviously, there's some type of proposal for having a, a split. Maybe you're running Padme with a, a value crew of galactic republics and seeing what you might try with that. You think that there's more value in creating, like, the power team with with Padme there? I, like, from my perspective, if I was going to set JMK on defense, I would almost certainly do it with Padme as part of the comp. I just think uh, I, I wouldn't want to marginalize my own JMK. On offense... Uh, I don't know. I think it would depend. And I actually really like that optionality because, of, as we've mentioned, like a Padme-led squad with that, that level nine mm-hmm. can punch pretty hot. Like, I mean, I think there are a lot of, like, kind of attractive targets for it in the JMK that doesn't have Padme is still, like, uh, a real weapon. But on defense, I would only do it if they're combined. I, I think it I think it calls out, and I think it's a pretty big factor, right, that if you do decide to pull it up, you can split them pretty well. Having that disruption and being able to to move around taunt is just such a huge advantage. And JMK is going to be a monster with that, right? And these stats are really working to what he wants to do anyway. So that being able to do is, is a great thing. I think for week one, I think people are kind of just going to be playing the recent hits. And at least my hope is a lot of people are just going to be running the monster teams and letting them clash and just make a big mess. I I am slightly concerned that like, you know, as scary as teams like SLK are on defense, it sure is easy to just blow a team up on offense with them. I I, I would not be shocked to know that people are still just, like, posting. What, what, what was the template for the last, like, couple of seasons? It was just, like, Ray LV plus if cheese teams or whatever. Like, I'm, I'm not yeah. going to be shocked if I see that again just because of how lethal even just, like, a SLK two-man can be. Yeah. But... You know, there's enough damage being caused right now that kind of feels like classic Galaxy Heroes that I, I, I do hope that people are going to gravitate towards the shiny, you know, dangerous toys. I'm like, oh, man, the, this team is insane. I got to post that. Yeah, some stupid high number, yeah. As long as they post them against Tass and Fatal, then we get to see them in action. 
That's right. Yes. That's my ass. Just watch me mash my face into the meat grinder. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I say, I, uh, no, say ahead, Fatal guys. did Zori. So don't, don't forget, Fatal did Zori. So I would be interested to see, and I think it's a good call out that what does Padme get to kill that we're not we're not aware of, right? That Padme level nine, when yeah. not with JFK, is still a huge level nine. And being able to turn everything to one damage is just crazy bananas. Fair. Yes. Well, how about, uh, you know, related to Padme, going, uh, going forward into Queen Amidala. Um, so, you know, I don't think we need to spend a lot of time talking about if we'd use it on attack. You know, I think we're all of the mind that, you know, the new teams, the meta teams are much more interesting to learn about what your opponents are going to try to use against it. So we'll just go ahead and assume that you guys are thinking to mostly have it on defense. Uh, you're welcome to correct me if I'm wrong about that. But, you know, we'll, we, we'd have the core three of Queen, Master Qui-Gon, and Padawan Obi-Wan. Uh, I know a lot of us have been talking about Zerus as probably a fairly reliable fourth, but I've heard some some interesting options for who your last two could be. I wonder what you guys are thinking. Who are you guys thinking maybe to, to set with them here in week one? The core, you know, outside of the core three. I'm happy to go through my thinking. It's not like super deep or revolved on it, but like the couple of the ones that were high on my list. Um, one, a little surprisingly, was uh, like considering GMY is a possibility, you know, because anytime under that Queen Amidala lead, as I recall, a kit, a is, you know, as long as you meet the requirements, no um, Galactic Legend and all, uh, all GR comp, then anytime special is used, that you get um, an assist. And if you, if you call Master Qui-Gon, then you're also calling uh, Padawan Obi-Wan. And frankly, I mean, just the out-of-turn attacks, unless you've got like a, a Padme Ryan, uh, DC on the other side, are brutal with that um, Pad, Padawan Obi-Wan DC. Mm-hmm. And GMY, you know, while got his own vulnerabilities, like uh, he's just doing a ton of specials, a ton of specials. So there's a lot of out-of-turn attack. And uh, the other fifth, uh, sort of assuming Xeris is a fourth, because I really like her kit for survivability, and like frankly, they just eat. You know, they they would welcome crits on multiple levels with her in there. Um, the other fifth I was thinking about was maybe Shock. Uh, you know, Shock does a good amount of specials, including one that does uh, call uh, call an assist and out of turn attacks, which is so appealing. So those were ones that I was just sort of without a ton of thought considering. How about you guys? Yeah, you hit the hit nail on the head for me. I mean, I was thinking, um, I you know, I've heard Zerus and then Grandmaster Zerus and Shock. I've heard mm-hmm. Shock and uh, Grandmaster. If you didn't have Zerus, that's kind of the things I've been hearing. I, I I've heard a couple people muse about whether or not they wanted to throw GK in there just for I don't know what reasons. I, I personally don't see a lot of appeal. Uh, maybe the dispel, maybe the retribution, maybe the crit immunity. It's just not a lot that I see hit them needing that he, he's doing. Uh, and also, it opens up a vulnerability, right? Like they could just focus him if he's taunting, as opposed to just being able to focus on decoy. But you kind of you want the crits. Thinking. Like that's where crit, crit immunity, I, like appealing from a survivability standpoint, but it, it you know keeps you from ramping. Um, so that's why I was a little less inclined on, on, on GK. Mace would be cool, but Mace has got, like, uh, Mace, at least, as I See, look at my board, in pretty high demand. I, I'm going to call one for the people who want to listen, and it's an idea that, that we're, there's, a, there's a team we're not touching on, and one of the things I'm thinking about, and he's normally pretty fast, Bad Batch Echo. Uh-huh. I don't think anybody's calling out. Now, what if you stop the team? Right. Think about the turn order of what you have for the team. Normally for us at the top, Bad Batch Echo runs super fast. He's going to pull all your buffs back and he's going to stop you and you're dead in your tracks. Now you're going to be dazed. And you have this team just going bananas on you. But what if you can't go? How does that work out? What does that look like? Right. What if, what if you're putting in some of the Bad Batch team? So there's other pieces. That, the one thing I like about this team is that there's a wide area that we can go. And there's things we can add in that people aren't thinking about. I think Zeris is a pretty good one. I think that stands pretty strong. Uh, I think Shock T, because she's such a good utilitarian character, she does a lot. GMY, obviously another one because that's disruption and he's just a monster there. But that's, there's these, all these other teams too where it's like 
man, there are some good Galactic Republic characters that are just kind of sitting there that have utility. So Bad Batch Echo is the one that I'm thinking about. Uh, if it goes on the team, how that looks. Okay. I want to talk that. about the Manhattan Project. <laughs> Oh, let's hear okay. it. Okay, this this is uh, so this is the, the sleeves rolled up, and you you got the big wooden spoon, and this is you stirring the the secret of sauce. Uh, yeah, Cam belongs on the team, I think, and in kind of my final pass for this season, I, I'm going to be shipping C three PO alongside him. Ooh, mm. that's a good one. There. I, so I haven't really gone through the team's matchup spread. Like I know Inquisitors will probably prey on them. Hmm. Uh, when Master Qui Gon first dropped, there, something very interesting happened. So I, I was testing Gas, as I think Gas is kind of a natural main predator for this team right now. Mm -hmm. uh, right, you break down Palcron. Hey, Pal ignores protection. Gas says, "No, the fuck you don't." Um, <laughs> I don't believe you. The Amidala team makes buffs like crazy, so Gas absolutely feasts on that and turns that into offense. Uh, you know, solid nuke tools and lasting sustain, and just yeah, no, it, it was a very favorable matchup. It was just a clean, like, nah, don't even bother. But the thing that I did notice is so when Master Qui Gun first released, I built him for speed, and I built him for health, and I built him for zero damage. And this dude was doing the most damage to Gas's protection out of anybody. And I said, huh. But what's this dude's crit chance as a special damage dealer? And it was like 19%. And I said, huh. Okay, well, let's try building him for damage. It was, like, notably better. But then I, like I talked about earlier, I did the roster scroll. And, uh, yeah, Yeti Mundi kind of refreshed my memory of an ancient bygone era when he first released, where I would run Cam in JKR GMY solely for the assists, the, the zealous ambition effect where supports convert their health into offense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so and, I, I'm going to make sure I'm clear on this, Fatal, because that's the Jedi Council one, is it? Is that uh, the one? Yeah. Because, so it says it requires all GR Jedi, but it doesn't actually, is that right? It's because it's a separate paragraph. The clause does not Oh apply. my god, okay. All right. So, all right. okay, take Good. that one sentence... Take that one sentence. Galactic Republic Jedi allies with a support role have an additional offense equal to 10% of their max health. Yeah. Now go reread uh, Amidala, go reread Master Qui-Gon and realize that yeah. they, they, they don't really have offense scale. I mean, you know, they have like a little bit, right? They get like health over time and protection over time ramps you a little bit. But you know what they do have? Master Qui-Gon Omicron, plus 100% health. Queen's Protection, it's like 60% health. Master Qui-Gon's dice roll stacks you up to 100% health. There, there are so many stacking health effects. And I, th this is why I call it the Manhattan Project, is this guy deals more damage than Palkron without... I mean, you know, he has the bulk around providing some health, but, like, he he is the damage dealer of the team. Th this character mm -hmm. is so deceptively designed. I, I really, in my heart of heart, I have to hope that the designer intended this, because, it, it like, the moment that I started looking at the team through this kit, I, I kind of fell in love with this team, is mm -hmm. there is so much happening under the hood here that really just kind of makes this team feel incredible. Less so for, like, you know, it's not like a bad batch game plan of, like, well, I use Echo AoE, and then I use Tech AoE, and then I combo out my abilities. But just the under-the-radar, like, combination of synergetic effects really comes together into some crazy ways where, like, I haven't had my Master Qui-Gon do, like, a million damage on a basic yet, but he's done, like, 800,000. Damn. Just to, just to throw out a number. So mm -hmm. so who's your fifth then going alongside Cam? Uh well, so kind of applying problem solving is if Cam is an interesting fourth, then I was looking at a few options, but I think C3PO really kind of shines out right now as an example. Okay. And partly what it started off as is if you look at the passive effects of translation, what does it do? When you have one stack of translation. 30% health. 30%, yeah. 
when you have two stacks, 15% crit chance, which we already established, the motherfucker has no crit chance. You are very much like having to mod down this direction. Yeah. But what causes the scaling to truly go crazy is crit damage as a stat, right? So you have your offense pool and then you have your health pool converted to offense, but crit damage applies to both offense sources as a whole. So I've got him on crit damage set, crit damage triangle. And then you look at stuff like, well, why does Queen Amidala have crit damage up on her for a special to give it to everyone? Because normally Pau gets it to himself. So it's like, well, he doesn't really need it. It's not for him. That's just for Master Qui-Gon. Mm -hmm. Like, again, I, I'm not too super tinfoil on it. But, like, again, if you look at the team through this lens, I actually think CG intended this. I, I think this was just, like, quietly sitting here. Th there is too much stuff that lines up in a way that makes my jaw drop and my eyes bulge out and go humana humana that it's like, there, there's no way. Wow, that is right? really cool. That's going to be interesting to see. People well, had Cam just, you know, assigned off to Qui-Gon for so long. That's great. It gets dumber here. So, did you all know that C-3PO was just Barriss Alfie? So, uh, here. Here's the combination. So, Padawan Obi-Wan, when someone gets crit, he makes defense up, right? Mm -hmm. C-3PO gives you 15% protection up whenever you gain a buff. C-3PO is Barriss off you, but also has a mass assist, but also scales your damage. It also has a fuck ton of passive synergy effects for GR and all those other factions. And reduces cooldowns and makes... Yes. Just even the thought about that, just another mass assist, the, the grossest of this combination. So so would this call for a remod? Like, you know, you've been having, uh, I think we've all been having our C-3PO modded uh, to be kind of later in the sequence in our CLS Rebels team. And if you were thinking to have this as a mainstay figure with your Queen Amidala, is that, uh, is that we're talking about going real, real fast now on C-3PO? Uh, I don't think it's mandatory. If anything, mm. I, I didn't actually put too much thought into this week's log. I sped him up, but I actually kind of mm. wish I slowed him down now, maybe, just to let him go after everyone else has translation. But, yeah, mm. I, I think having him go at the end still kind of makes sense. Okay. All right. Um, let me dig into the next question here, because we're going to have to wrap this and move into the uh, Patreon questions before I, I take up the entire time here. So, answers to Slacker, both Galactic Legend and not. Um, I'll, try and, I'll try and keep it brief here to save time, but like for me, um, JML was only barely not working for me in threes, so I think I'll have a decent case for that in fives. Of course, that's one of the more typical counters. Uh, where I got jammed up in threes, I needed to use Bane, so it'll just it'll just be something top of mind about what I'm going to be keeping to deal with Ray if I'm going to flex Bane in that direction. Because yeah, Bane has just well, been also, just chuck yeah. at Ray. Everyone slow your JMLs down. You'll thank me later. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, if you go before Slacker, you just insta-lose. Yeah. There's, like, nothing you can do. Fair. Fair. All right, so definitely, if you're going to do JML, be slower than the Slacker you're going to fight. Um, any other Galactic Legend counters you guys are thinking to save for that or something more off-meta you're willing to try? It's JML for me. That's what I'm going to be trying again. Hmm. Depending on how absurd the crowd is, um, in Arena, I've gotten JKR, JKL armor to work a little bit, or at least kill all the sides. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you wanted to go su so you wanted to go super heavy and then just you know have a couple plan two shots along the way. I'm. Ooh, you faded. You you trailed off there. It was answers, I think. Yeah, I think Slacker has the fewest actual answers. So I think if you're going to plan to two-shot something, that's probably high on your list. That's fair. That is fair. And yes, I, I do think he has very few clean solutions, for sure. 
How about the resties? I think the no, nothing is... wasn't already such on. Huh? Sorry, go for it, Fiddle. Uh I'm I'm still very much curious about gun or JML gets Gungans, and if that plays out, then I'm, I don't really have an answer for what will replace it, but that will create a vacuum that I'll have to answer for. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um let's uh, let's talk about the last question here. Any other teams you're really super excited about going into this week one? I mean, obviously there's the top meta factions that we've already covered, but is is anybody else something that you're really looking forward to either trying on offense or setting as a defense that's not one of the main teams we've discussed? Z- Zori versus Queen Amidala. Maybe even versus Gungans. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's... uh. Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah, I could. Hmm, I could really see the the Queen Amidala being an interesting try. Yeah, the Gungans sound challenging. Uh, just forgetting like I don't ping think they. Well, Fatal will correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think the team has any reactive TM. I so haven't looked at it through that out. lens yet, but I don't think of anything off the top that would actually matter yeah mm-hmm. i mean she takes a bonus turn with decoy dice but that's just not gonna do much to you uh i guess the biggest thing you would maybe be scared about is like a pow counter attack but like sorry said stealth and you've got the can't die passive anyway mm. okay yeah i mean unless there's a clause i'm forgetting about that passes the small test Hmm. Good thought. I guess the bit... She applies doubt when the decoy dies, right? But that doubt's dispellable, I believe. It's it's unresistible, but it's dispellable. Mm-hmm. So, like, the amount of actual impact is non-real. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. That's a good one, Dagger. How about the rest of you guys? Yeah, I, I'm I'm pretty excited with you know just what we've already been discussing. Um, I I, I want to see if my defense modded Treya would perform well on defense this season. That's kind of the only other thing I'm interested in because I haven't run her in defense sets until now. Historically, she's just been rocking offense, but a couple of these Treya matchups in the last couple of seasons have resulted in her just getting bopped out. And uh, that's what forced my hand. And we'll see how that goes. All right. Phoenix for me has been, like, probably one of my best performing defense teams in the last year. But the last few Datacron sets have created, like, inhospitable environments for them. So I don't know if I'm going to post them yet, but that's kind of one of the big questions hanging over this season for me is... Now that teams like Gideon have been printed and aren't necessarily on defense, like, mm-hmm. do they still have a space to exist? Because Tuscans, I solved for, but I don't know if I can solve for everything that now threatens them. Right. It was fun while it lasted, though. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. I mean, I, I miss using it. It's such a fun little gimmick when you can, but uh, it hasn't felt very usable in the last couple of seasons. And when plus, you sorry, when you drop full tenacity modding, you collect twenty banners for free one day, auto Tuscan, and then realize, hey, why does my damage over time not appear? Yeah, yeah, I remember Sasha. Um, was it me you caught out with that, or was it TJ. someone else? Oh, the, the nightmare that is me trying to take my Tuscans because the fuck is Sasha with his tenacity? Yeah, there. Yeah, I didn't think it was me, but I remember seeing it, and I remember having sympathy pains at the very least watching it, so yeah. Such a small change that made such a big impact. It's a, it's a, it's a, quite an investment, though. It's not a, yeah, it's, it it is a small change in the grand scheme of things, but it is an undertaking to pull that off. Yeah, you want to hit, like, ideally, like, 150 north. I think, I think the line, if you want to get those more, I think the line that I ran was like 186 tenacity on all five Phoenix characters to make it airtight. Jeez. Yeah, good lord. That's a uh, strong commitment. That is, that's a very deep investment. 
All right, guys, let's turn to the final section, Patreon questions. Yeah, so folks were geeked when, you know, I, I always let the patrons know ahead of the general public uh, who the uh, special guest is, so they get first crack. A couple questions straight up for you, Fatal. Um, from the mine that brought us the Night Sister counter to Java, and more recently, the Zori counter to Ray, what's the next off-meta counter you're considering working on? Um, I don't have a good answer to that. It's kind of like, I wish I could say a lot of this stuff was premeditated, but it really just kind of, a lot of this stuff comes together as like a spark within like 24 hours of me even realizing the possibility of it existing. I don't know what the answer to that's going to be. It's, uh, I mean, you know, there's going to be stuff like, I think enough people are aware that like okay yeah maul blows up fucking layer or whatever that's not really mm -hmm. crazy or special or interesting um i don't know i like i'm a dollar could probably do it but i think i would people really be surprised if i'm a dollar could do it i feel like she's of a certain power level that like yeah she's in that ballpark arena like if someone said that she's dropping bodies like i don't think that's really gonna blow people away i don't know uh, honestly it might just have to be whatever next interesting team comes out or that starts to jam whatever next gl comes out yeah i mean like, that was kind of the thing right is we haven't really had any major new defensive big bads recently to need mm -hmm. to solve for like Le leia has some clear foundational exploitable weaknesses so i'm, I'm kind of looking the next few conquest releases i mean maybe, maybe luthan would be my my heart answer just because I hope he does something cool. But uh I'm hoping the next GL makes a defensive splash beyond a Datacron season that kind of you know puts them up in a way where we we are called to answer, right? Yeah, swings the pendulum a bit more towards um scrappy fights and less efficiency. I'm 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 there for that. I'm all about that. Uh, next question here for you, Fatal. Uh, I, you know, this is from one of my patrons here. I used your mod videos to take the plunge into the world of competitive mods and how to roll them efficiently. Uh, sorry, roll them efficiently. As that was three to four years ago at this point, is there anything you would say is different now? Uh, maybe stats that weren't useful back then, uh, but are now, for example. Uh... In my heart of hearts, I actually do want to update that video, but shockingly, I, for the most part, I don't actually think I would really change much. If anything, I think that methodology has aged extremely, extremely well with recent mod additions. Um, in terms of stuff that I would mention now that I have it before, I, I think I would really just double down and hammer home because I, I'm I'm pushing this initiative for myself currently as well is taking characters that are on primaries like offense primaries and saying okay you really don't need to be an offensive primary especially if you're on defense uh focusing on both primaries with high offense secondaries sprinkle and stuff like percent defense so that you can create these sort of unexpected stat swings where i mean my padawan obi-wan I, I still maintained roughly the same offense target but i was able to double his effective bulk on hot utils by sprinkling in armor in Wolf primaries, hmm. for example, right? Is like, I think the the ultimate name of the game of mods and high level stat modding is. I mean, a I think it is just an incredibly good investment. I I really, really, really mean this when I say that so much of CG's, uh, raid and just PVE design lately. A it's been a lot of mod puzzles, and B you can brute force those mod puzzles with good stat mods and b if you can just i mean how much do people dislike when datacron seasons have crazy amounts of bulk in them right mm -hmm. now if you can just have a certain quality of mod where you can just surprise somebody with hey this character has a hundred percent extra defense for no fucking reason because these secondaries are damn good i mean that I can't say for sure that that's going to swing a ton of matchups, but that is where I'm currently exploring is like 
No, I think yeah, you're man. onto something there because the, the the offense these days is so explosive, and it has been for months, right? Like like being able to forestall a character, uh, like so, so many of our counters assume that the priority targets, the non tank targets, keel over after the first special or two on your team, um, right. and be and being able to forestall that even a turn could be lethal. Yes. Well, I see that. There's there's wisdom. There's gold in them, our hills. Okay, uh, well, the rest of the questions here are for the entire panel, so chirp in, guys. Um, is the off-meta dead? It feels like most off-meta counters have a really poor win rate, and it's not worth pursuing this play style. So, I, I you know... <laughs> I know we'll have diverse opinions on this. Um, for 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 me, my loyalty is to what's going to work. Uh, so I'm just I'm I'm still going to see what I think my opponent's most likely to do, and if that requires me to lean more into off meta counters, uh, if the win rate looks respectable, like something like I don't know 80, 80 85 percent, it's something I might go with because that means if I'm planning for a condition where it might fail, I'll I'll. I'll plan to set extra heavy and actually go for that two shot. It's been a while since I felt like I had to do that a long while, but that's what it would kind of take for me to plan on doing off meta. How about you guys? It depends on how you define off meta. If you're talking about non Omi, non GL, that meta has been dying for. Yeah. I think what they mean by off meta is, um, you know, the, the idea of punching up. The idea of punching up. Oh. That'll never be dead. That'll never be dead. Because, like, off-meta counters, like, to the top-end teams is, is how I you interpret have, that. You just have to work. Yeah. I, I reject the notion that win rates are low. Sorry? Sorry, I don't know. Sorry, I was just breaking up. I, I reject the notion that win rates are low. I mean, win rates fundamentally don't really matter win rates are a reflection of the, the community's ability to execute rather than like the viability of the dynamics yeah. instead yes yeah. right like night sisters versus java has like less than 20 percent win rate because a people are addicted to zombie but then b right like the the all crit damage everything on everyone including daka that's just not common knowledge i haven't made a video on it so like obviously People aren't going to know that, but mm -hmm. also there's there's like a slight executional aspect of it as well. So, I I, I know you all jokingly mentioned it as well, like a fatal only counter, but like I do just want to hammer home that like there were a, a couple of people who reached out to me after the fact and wanted to learn, and I coached them on mm -hmm. stuff like Treya versus Lord Vader, and the funny thing was the meta evolved to the point where I couldn't use Trey against Lord Vader actually like fairly quickly after the fact they were still using that shit for years because you know in you know whatever Kyber 3 or whatever GAC things don't move the way that they move at our level and so like a lot of this really is just about setup and execution and so even though something is low win rate it's really just a question of is it actually a playable matchup or is it a question of, is it actually just nobody knows what they're doing, but the matchup is fine. That's my opinion. Anyway, completely fair. Anybody else want to chirp in on that off meta comments? I think well, if you're going to, he, he said it way better I, than I did. That's kind of where I was heading okay. to. If you but have I, the I, setup, if you have the setup, the, the up does not have, off meta isn't dead. Yeah, I hear you. I hear yeah, you. Yeah, uh, so I I totally agree. And the, the one aspect that I'll add that I think is an unfavorable trend for off meta, like it's just in terms of its like prevalence, is just over time the board has not increased in size. Our mm -hmm. rosters and specifically like our GLs have, and as a result, uh, sort of the efficiency or cheese meta has gotten more common. Uh, it's gotten easier to execute. And I agree with Fatal that like an informed off meta counter does not have to have any kind of like reduced uh, win rate. 
but you find people less willing to one sort of like climb the learning curve and take whatever bumps and bruises come with sort of um, it takes to get to being in an informed state and then um, them feeling right or wrong that it's going to put them at a disadvantage. It doesn't necessarily, but there's that sense that you kind of have to go through that journey of learning with it. And so I think people are doing it less because of that. I think that, I think that's one of like a number of uh, like overall, I love this game and I feel like it's in a pretty good state, but um, the failure to change GAC's board and the, the map and, and everything, just sort of the size of it, has set uh, some unhealthy uh, sort of side effects. Very good. Very good. Well, guys, that about wraps up the, uh, the questions. Some of the other questions that the patrons asked were already answered here in the, uh, yep. the course uh-huh. of the show. So... You know, just want to go ahead and uh, thank our special guest, Fatal, for being with us. Um, You know, I think you are the first content creator guest that we've had. So I do want to give you the opportunity. uh, Plug your stuff. Let the people know where they can find you. Yeah, that's twitch.tv slash playbook TV, youtube.com slash the playbook, which to this day I still have no idea how that was freely available and accessible. Um. Yeah, hopefully we'll have some videos out there sooner than later. If not, feel free to yell at me. The appetite's out there, man. I mean, you're hearing it from us. You hear it in your DMs, I'm sure, like you were saying. (laughs) So uh, people are waiting, chomping at the bit. Yep, the appetite's here as well. It's just... It's all about that ADHD medication. All right, so if you're in Fatal's (laughs) community, you know, uh, find out the, the poor sons of bitches that are responsible for this situation and blow up their customer service line. Make this Don't right. That, but <laughs> I actually know some people have been like stripped <laughs> from social media for saying that. But eh, yeah. hey, 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 you know, it's a, <laughs> the pe- you, you want you want to deliver to the people. You're saying you do. It's just, hey, you know, what? We, we have to clear this gate. They'll help. They'll help. The hunger's there. All right, guys, Uh, that that about wraps it up here. I'm going to go ahead and start doing the outro. Um, You know, if you're wanting to catch me live this season, I stream on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Tassinix. Uh, (laughs) uh, I see here in the comments, yeah, Dagger feels bad about his uh, his audio situation with the reception, but it's, it's part of the charm, man. Don't worry about it. But, uh, yeah, if you want to find me, I'm on twitch.tv forward slash Tassinix. That's where I stream. Of course, if you're watching this uh, on YouTube, you'll see uh, I'm on Tassinix Gaming is my channel. And, of course, uh, Plotting it and Scheming Itself is also on SoundCloud, uh, YouTube, Podcasts, uh, wherever else Spotify gets shared out to. So find it there as well. I've also recently started uploading there in the video format. Um, you know, future episodes may have more than just me on camera, so you never know what might happen. Um, that said, let's see, uh, in addition to plotting and scheming on Tassinix Gaming, some other swaga related content you might be interested in. I have Datacron set, uh, videos, you know, kind of general discussions about what are the highlights, what are the, the big things to go for. I make those with Aesop Rock, one of the top players in the game. So you'll want to check out uh, the video here on set 15, which we're still farming here in Conquest. And, of course, I did start a recent mod guide series on YouTube, which is, uh, you know, apparently, you know, very much in demand. Really want to thank the community for being so driven and being into that. Um, Let's go ahead and, of course, plug for my Patreon, because uh, we have so many supporters here wife's coming in the room i right. appreciate you thank you also just uh just while i can uh your your hat is stupid always always a pleasure to get in your commentary dagger um it, it, you know it, it enriches the experience for all of us so thank you but yes uh let's see let's no we're not going to thank dagger we'll thank him at the very end if at all so, check out patreon.com forward slash Tassinix for any upwardly mobile GAC player. There's probably something there uh, that you'll really love. You know, the $5 tier gets your foot in the door, gets you early access to plotting and scheming, and most of my other YouTube-related content 
Uh, patrons get it a few days in advance. Usually, for GAC, that means that you've got a little bit better preparation going into your first round uh, than just about anybody else. So for those folks that jump on in, uh, let's go ahead and shout them out at VIP Access. Thank you to Andrew, White Wolf, Sam Bimes, Jobin4527, Stark Strategy Gamer, Raze Malbus, Brock Thudsteel, Renee Bebe, Deadpool Cal 28, Johnny B Ottawa, JJ's Productions Twitch, Sweens 14, and Darth QPPMG. I almost forgot Arge, who just signed up the other day, but I haven't actually got him included in the slide. Didn't forget you there, buddy. All right, stepping up from VIP access, if you wanted to start uh, taking advantage of the bots to get that improved Intel game, at VIP Access Plus, you get a bundled access to my Patreon and to Omegabot Patreon. So if you ever see me go over that detailed scouting report at the start of my streams, that is what you get there. You, you'll be able to pull more than just the last two weeks of data to build out a custom report on your opponent. And of course, jumping, uh, well, before we jump, from there, we have to thank Stryker and Dash Sotnikam for taking advantage of that offer. Thank you guys so much. And then jumping to VIP Access Premium is the double um, bot bundle. So you have the Omega Bot Patreon and Hot Utils Patreon, uh, which is the premier tool for mass loadout uh, management. I know players like TJ Fatal like to use Hot Utils to tweak and, and fine-tune and remod their whole roster in an automated fashion, putting in detailed requirements. That's, uh, that's something I like doing manually in-game, but I'm not going to sit here and downplay the power that that can give you. So thank you. I think Fatal taught us all how to do it when it was new back in the day. For sure. For sure, it is. Amen, amen, amen to that. So yeah, thank you so much to Quig, Ibanex, Sir Boss, Trevor Boy Gaming, and Funky for taking that double bot bundle. And of course, my number one patron at the top of the heap, Nomad's Reaper. No man does it better. Uh, pops into stream from time to time, drops hundreds of subs. Thousands of biddies showers us all with the love. Thank you so much for the extremely generous support over the years. And of course, last but never least, our special thanks. To Yoda Force, one of my original supporters back in the day, bought me the mic I'm speaking to you on. He has long since quit the game, but we remember him fondly from the other side. To Mrs. T, my wife, uh, keeping everything managed in the background while I spend... An hour here, two hours there, three hours here on stream, you know, trying to be halfway decent at a phone game. Really appreciate that. And of course, to my co-hosts here, I'm Plotting and Scheming Dagger, TJ and Sasha Isha. It's always hurting cats making it work between the four of us. And, and, and you know, sometimes it's also a challenge to, to get guests in, but, you know, Fatal was uh, a pretty smooth customer. No, nevertheless, I appreciate you guys uh, setting aside the time from your busy, you know, work and family schedules to make this show work couldn't do it without you really pleased with what we've come up with and again you know we've been doing this just over a year you know i know we we called that out uh last month but man it, it really flew by so thank you guys for making that possible all right coming back over to the main scene um we're all so thrilled to be, to be clear to be clear i bring you a, i don't to be clear i don't make time for you i just bring you guys along in my real life that's fair that's fair. Yes. And it, you, you sound like you're stagger. talking to us with your phone strapped to your back as all four of your limbs are engaged with, like, climbing some type of Indiana Jones ladder up a tunnel. Yeah, I believe you, bud. I believe you. All right. Never, <laughs> nevertheless, uh, you know, I know we're all stoked here about going into this first week. A lot to talk about in the uh, week one review, uh, so stay tuned for that. And of course, until next time, it's been real, it's been awesome, it's been real awesome. Take care.